Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning. This is Websites for Beginners with JP, and in this video, we will be reviewing and looking at Jet Form Builder from Croco Block. Or is it a great little plugin that comes for free with a pro version that allows you to build out super contact and forms within your page builder and WordPress? One minute detour. Jet is associated with CrocoBlock, which is infamous for their plugins that they make for the Elementor page builder. But if you've been to their website recently, you will notice that they've also started producing for Mr. Gutenberg or Mrs. Gutenberg. For Gutenberg, there are plugins for Jet Engine, Jet Smart Filters, and a few others. You can go check out all of this. I'll put a link for you in the description below. But what has popped onto the scene lately is Jet Form Builder. And Whereas I have form builders that I love, the difference between Jet Form Builder and the others is that Jet actually uses the Gutenberg editor and uses elements or blocks to build it out. And I'll show you how to do that very soon. So go check it out. There's a free version and then there is a pro version. But if you look at the differences between the free and the pro, I'm going to guess that in many, many cases, especially if you're watching this channel, you're going to be very happy and more satisfied than can be ever with just a free version. So go check out the links in the description. Also, just follow along, install the plugin, have a go at it and see how it works. And if you're interested in it, here you go. Free version, a lot of features here. And mostly what you get for the pro version is really pro features like CRM and sales and more email marketing and automation. So. The idea is if you're going to make money, we want to make some money. But let's see how the free one works in this video. And I've got my website here. On my Contact Us page, I want to bring in a very standard basic contact form. So we're going to look at how to do that. And then I'm going to show you a few more of the blocks that you can add to this form builder. Bring in my contact form here. So simply, I just want an email address. I want the name and I want the message. First of all, Bobby and Sarah, we need to install JetForm Builder. And I'm running WordPress here on my favorite free and premium theme, which is Bloxy. Go and check out Bloxy if you are totally unsure which theme you should be getting. But that's not where we want to be. We want to be in plugins. And then we simply click on Add New. And then we search for JetForm Builder. JetForm Builder. And from here, Quickly install, activate, and let's have a quick look. Here in the back, you will see Jet Forms appears here in the navigation bar on the left. Under settings, we have payment gateways that you want to add here. Your capture settings, MailChimp, Get Response, and Active Campaign, all your APIs. Add ons will show you all the pro features. So even though these are all like add ons, they all go under a pro license. If you go for the pro license, you will get all these add-ons. Where we want to go is over here, forms. So every time you create a new form, it's going to be here. Newcomers often think, mm, this is strange. I need to create a form. I thought I'd just create the form within the page builder. But in many cases, you may have more than one form. Don't just see a form as a contact form. It can be many things. It can be collecting a survey. It can be just collecting emails, a competition. For each of those, you want to collect the information separately. You want to send it maybe to se separate recipients. And that's why you can create more than one form. And as we have just installed it and we've got nothing going on, we need to create a new form. Click here on Add New. And this is where JetForm Builder is completely different to any of the other guys out there because it takes us into Gutenberg, the WordPress editor. This is very familiar if you know WordPress Gutenberg, but what you will also observe up here in the toolbar is that I even have access to each and every other block that Gutenberg allows you to use. So I have here Stackable, which is an add-on. You can have Kubely, you can have many other add-ons, and you can bring that into your form. How awesome and how cool is that? Pretty much. So. For people who are very well versed with Gutenberg and who are making their websites with Gutenberg, this is going to be an awesome tool. You're going to feel at home and very familiar. We give our form a name, I'm call it contact us, contact form, let's just call it contact form. And then we start here. On the page, there are already 
two, actually three, but we'll just go for two blocks. If you go up here to the online view, you will see I have a hidden field, a text field, and the submit field. Over here, this is the hidden field. Over here is the text, and over here is the submit field. Where do these three guys come from? Go to add block and scroll to around here, and you will see jet form fields. And already you're like, wow, look at all those form fields that you can use. We'll take a look at many of them very soon. Let's build out our simple contact form first. Already, then we have these three, and you're going to leave the post ID there. Then for the text, if you click on it, as usual, the inspector on the right will give you access to everything under the block. Notice next to block, there's also settings for the jet form. We'll get back to that soon. Here, with this block, we have brought in the text field. It says text there, but this is actually a multi useful field. So we go and look here under field settings. And if you've worked with forms before, this will feel familiar to you. First, the field type, you can put it on text, which is common if you want to collect a short piece of information that is given in text, like someone's name. Under that, you can have email, which we're going to use because we want to collect an email. You can also have a URL, a website address, as well as telephone number and password. And for each one you select, there will be a special way that the information is collected. So make sure you select the right one so that it can be grouped nicely and that you can work with it nicely, especially if you have mailer integration. These become very useful. This first one is we want to know the name of the person. So we go to the top and we say here field label. We call it your name. And then under the form field name, you give it something that you can identify. This is like an ID. Make sure you use small letters and only things like this underscore. If you want to add a description, you can do here, but we're going to leave all of that empty. It's set to text, and this is all done in the inspector. Here, above the block in the toolbar is required. We want the person to fill this in, and you will see the little asterisk appears there for is required. Now we have the name field. Next, we want to have the email field where they will fill in their email address. Because this is the same block, we don't need to drag in a new block. We can just duplicate this one and go here, duplicate. Go to the second one. We change it here to your email address. And then in form field name, we can just even just type email, nothing more. And then important under field text, we have to put it at email. And because we already put it on is required for the one above, this one will inherit it because we duplicated it. So what have we got here? We've got the name of the person. We've got the email address of that person as well as the send button. Now we need to bring in an area for the person to leave their message. For that, we need a little bit more text. I'll go up here to the add blocks, scroll down to where the form fields are, jet form fields, and here, text area field, because this is paragraphs, maybe person wants to rant or give a very good compliment, go over here, click on it, and it drags it here. If it drops by mistake in a place you don't want it, just use the up and down arrow keys here to move the field into the desired position where you need it to be. Right is required. Yes, we don't want them to send empty things. So let's click here in field label on the right in the inspector, your message, and then form field name, we'll say message. And then here is a minimum length and maximum length. So how many characters, let's say we just put there a thousand characters, make sure people don't just write pages and pages, and we're not interested in reading that. And you can say then here in the field description to remind them maximum, maximum of thousand characters. Let me just make sure that's a thousand characters for the message. Just to let them know if they go crazy, they won't be able to write more than a thousand characters. Now let's see what we've got here. Publish. Okay, and I'll publish it again. And when I click on preview, it only gives me this. I can view it in tablet and I can view it in mobile. And what's great, it's already set up for that. In fact, you will see that there 
are no responsive controls over on this side. Now we have created our basic form. Let me just see, I see here it says start writing. Often in Gutenberg, it drops in elements that you do not want there. So let's go up here to our outline. And yeah, here it is. You see it dropped in a paragraph. Sometimes you, by mistake, you add something and then it's there. So I'll just type something and then I'll go and remove it. Let's save it again, update, and we're done. Go back into WordPress and we go look for our contact page to add this contact form. Before we go there, what's important is that if you are building out your site within the WordPress Gutenberg editor, you don't need to use short codes or anything. It's going to give you a block that you can just bring in. If you are using page builders and you want to bring in a short code, you're going to grab that from over here. We'll go to pages, contact us, and click on it to edit it. Over here, let's talk. Let's see what we've going on. My structure is advanced column, advanced heading. And this is my second column. I want to place it under it. And this page fully built with stackable. So with my advanced heading selected, which is this let's talk, I'll now go to add blocks. And this one you're going to find somewhere here. For some reason, it's going to appear here, jet form, just one. Click on it and it will drop it in there. And now we need to select that form we had created. The inspector here on the right, from the drop down, we only have this one form. We created it called contact form. I click it and it drops in there and it shows us how the successful message will look and it also shows us how an error message will look. All of this that you see here, the styling is taken from the theme. So we are using Bloxy, anything in terms of fonts, sizes, buttons, all of that comes from Bloxy, thanks to Bloxy. You do have a styling function, but that is an additional add-on from Procoblock called Jet Styling, which is also free. We're not gonna cover it in this video, but I'll do a separate video on that. Let's update it and go view it on the front end to see how it looks. Preview, preview, a new tab. And as simple as that, that was super, super fast. So we have these rounded corners, which I'm not a big fan of, but for that, we will need the jet styling so we can do that. And then everything is here. We need to still set up a few other things here, but I'll show you when we go back into the form how to do that. Let's jump back to the page. Everything that we can do with this block, we have the contact form here. Fields, you can put it in a row. Row means that our labels move to the left of the fields, update, preview it on the front, and that's how it will look in a row format. And then your required mark, this little symbol you see here, you can change it to anything else like required, but I would suggest we keep it to the universal understanding of what is required. And then you have a few more functions here that you can leave now. If you have multiple pages of the form, when you break the form, you will enable it here to form pages progress. Don't worry about this one. If this is what you want to achieve, this is what you want to do. Now we've updated it. Shall we leave it to that? I think it's okay. Let's leave it to that. But what is important is that at this moment, if a person comes to your website, they fill it in, they send it, it's going to go nowhere. So let's go have a look a little bit more at the settings of this form. For that, we have to go back into the form builder which is JetForm Builder. We exit back to WordPress, JetForms. Now we go to Forms and then select Contact Form here. This is the one we had created. I mentioned earlier to you here on the right, when you work with a block, your block settings appear here as I select them within the inspector. But there are also universal settings for the entire form that you get here under the JetForm. You have, again, these default settings. If you want it in a column or a row, required mark and submit type, and then also enable form pages progress. We saw that you have it in the block itself, but you can set default values here as well. If you are working with Capture, all your settings go in here. And then what you have to set up here is post submit actions. What happens when a visitor to your site fills in their details, and then sends it. And for that, you want it to send an email to you so that you know that this has been sent. 
And there's a few more here that you can go through if you have MailChimp, Active Campaign, and if you go for the pro version, you will have a few more mailers that will appear here. To set up this, you're going to click here on the little pencil and then mail to the admin email, which is the email that is associated with this account, email from a submitted field or a custom email. Now, because I've set up my admin email already, I'll just select this so I don't have to type in the email. And then from here, I want to format this part here, the content. So currently it will just say, hi admin, there are new order on your website, which is wrong. There is a new order and then order details. What you can do, because this is just for you, you put in your own message. You will use this little spanner here from all of this to define how this message will look. So for example, name, this is the person who have sent it to you. And then next to it, you click here on your name. Next line, I will say email address, of course, of the person who contacted you. Click on email and then the message. And I will say message. And then here, message. You can see there's still post ID. And if you have more, all of these will appear in here. And now I've set it in. The normal functions you can do reply to all of this. Let's change the subject. New message from website. And now we've set all of this here. Update. And we are ready for that. You also have presets, which draws the information from other areas on your page. For example, if you have subscribers, that's a little bit advanced feature. And then under here, all your general messages, like you have submitted the form successfully. If you want to go and change that, you can change that here. But most of these are pretty good. You can use them as standard is. We've changed all of this, so I'll just update and jump to the front end. Let's refresh this one to lock in the changes and test it. My name is Billy Bob, and my email address is billy.bob at angelina.com. And the message is... You are awesome, something like that. Awesome, awesome. And then click on submit. It's going to reload the page and then your successfully, form successfully submitted. Because I'm using a local host, I'll go check within my local host where that message is. Uh, tools, uh, utilities, open mailhawk. And there we go. So you see, here it is. If I click on it, there's the name Billy Bob, email address Billy Bob, and then the message. And of course, the email you have entered or whichever admin email you are using, this is where you will be receiving it. And this is how you collect your leads. If you have a mailer integration like MailChimp, that's going to be super awesome and very easy for you to use. Now, that is as simple to set up a very basic contact form on your website. Let's have a look at a few of the other functions within this builder, what you can work on. And I'll just drop them in randomly so we can have a look at them. Let's select the last part here under your message and we scroll down. Let's calculate it field, check box field, conditional block, dot date field. Let's start with the date field. I always like a good date field. And if you select on it and go to the block here, you will see again all the various settings here in the inspector on the right. If we go view it on the front end, you get a very, very nice date selector. You can type it in there or you click here on the little calendar symbol and it's a very easy. I love it. They've done a really good job in how to select the years and the months and the dates. To this, you can add another one that includes the date and the time. So here you've got the date, uh, date time field. I really like this one. Update. Let's go to the front and view it. And you will see you have your month, month, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to type it in there. Again, you just go to this little calendar, click on it, and now you have the time settings over here. Very nicely done again. I can click on it, and this will be the minutes, and you can scroll up and down through them to the hours, and it's a.m. or p.m. Very nicely done. Let's see what else we can bring to the table. Jet Form Builder. Form break field. Now, the form break field will allow to cut your form into steps. So you can call it a stepper. So if I click here, it will drop in the form break field. I'll just move it up to, let's say, under your email address. So before you can progress to the next phase, 
you have to first finish this one. So if I say here update, and we go now, you will see that my form is cut actually in two parts. So before I can go on, I have to say here I'm Billy Bob, and then Billy Bob Janse van Vieren. <laughs> yeah, we change it, Janse van Vieren.com. And now you see once I type in the email address, the next becomes highlighted. If I click on next, now it gives me the rest. Then you've got a group break field, which I believe isn't working 100%. I tested it, I couldn't get it to work, so I've logged it. Heading, you'll see it's a H1 if you bring in that heading. Hidden field, which we already saw there at the top. Media field for uploading. Number field, radio fields, which is your normal radio selectors. Range field, I think you've seen range fields before. You set it up here on the right. So let's say, choose your score if you are rating something. And then we can call this one score. And then start here at the minimum value of one, maximum value of 10 and your steps are one. So now, if your visitor has to give a rating maybe for service or what they're thinking, oh, let's just take this step. Where is this break? Breaker, this one, remove it. Update, let's refresh. Yes, here you go, your score, and then you can change it from here. Right, and what else do we have? Um, um, a few more here. Right, so the repeater field, very nice. I will do another video on the repeater field. Select field is very similar to your radio fields. And then the submit field, you can only have one. It's already on the page. And we looked at text field. We did text area. And then with that often goes your YC week. What you see is what you get field. And then this time field, which is just, you know, similar to the date time field, just separate. Great a number of features here. I cannot think of anything with a free builder that you will want more, especially just building out a very, very simple contact us form. This is going to do a great job for you. Give it a try. I know there are already many form builders out there. Unfortunately, I suffer from the disease, cannot have enough, and I'm always trying the new stuff to see what is out there. Thank you very much. Hope this was useful. See you in the next video from me, JP. Have a great day and stay safe.